Okay, let's solve this differential equation. And based on the look, it seems like this is exact, right? So now let's go ahead and make sure it is exact. Let's do the check. Right here, let's label this as m, label this as n, and we do the partial derivative. For the m, we'll take the partial of m with respect to y. So let me just write down my, is that m sub y? Okay, this is how I like to remember it. And then right here, you see the derivative of this with respect to y, we just get 2x. And for n, we'll take this with respect to x, and this will be 0. Negative 3x squared will give you negative 6x. And you see that, unfortunately, they are not the same at the moment. Well, we can take up this because this is, in fact, almost exact. Hmm, let's see. I know I will have the special integrating factor, and I will have to do either this minus that or that minus this, right? And at the end, I will have to divide by either the original m or the original n. And let me just think about it before I actually put on the work. Either way, on the top, I will just end up with x, right? An expression in terms of x, regarding to which minus what. If I divide the result on the top over n, well, this is y squared minus 3x squared. I cannot cancel everything out and end up with an expression in terms of just x or just y, because you know, I cannot reduce that. I want to divide it by this. I want to divide it by m, and this is how you are going to do it. Right here, let me just label this. Okay, I want to divide it by m on the bottom. If I know I want to divide it by m on the bottom, that means this right here should be m sub y. They always match. This on the top is the partial derivative though. The bottom is always going to be either the original. I want to divide it by m. Okay, so I'll put this down. Of course, in the front, it will be n sub x and then minus m sub y, and let's just work this out n sub x is negative 6x, and then we minus m sub y, which is 2x, and we divide it by m, which is 2xy. And on the top, you see, you will get negative 8x over, on the bottom, you have 2xy. And check this out. x and x, well, of course, they cancel. You can reduce this a little bit more. You will end up with negative 4 on the top over y, isn't it? So you see, we work this out, and we have an expression in terms of just y. So that means I can find a special integrating factor in terms of just y. And this right here, remember, this is just the ingredient itself, the integral, right? I will have to integrate this, and I will do this now with respect to y. So I have to integrate that. So of course, I'll come back here just to make the formula more legitimate. But don't forget, neither. This right here, it is just in the exponent of e, right? So it's e to that power. So we also have to work this out, e to that power, OK? So I will focus on this. I will write this down for you guys. We will have a mu sub y, well, mu of y, technically, mu of y. Special integrating factor in terms of y. This is just going to be e as the base. And we have a negative 4 in the front. Let's just put that down. And the integral of 1 over y is ln absolute value of y, right? Don't worry about the plus c for integrating purpose, for integrating factor purpose. Just this is enough, the function part. And then we take this, of course, bring that to the exponent. We have e ln absolute value y to the negative fourth power. And you see, they cancel each other out. And for integrating factor purpose, you don't worry about the absolute value neither. I'm just going to say, let's use mu sub y, or mu of y, sorry, <laughs> mu of y, and this is equal to y to the negative 4 power, which is, of course, 1 over y to the fourth power. So what does this mean? That means I will take this back to the original and multiply everything by 1 over y to the fourth power. Well, if you multiply everything by 1 over y to the fourth power, it's the same as saying I will divide this by y to the fourth power I'll divide this by y to the fourth power. I'll divide this by y to the fourth power. So this is the crucial step that we need in order to make this equation exact. So now let's finish this. And of course, I'll erase the board. And now let's see what we have. Right here, 2xy over y to the fourth power, we will have 2x over y to the third power. And then we put the dx on the side like this. Then we will have, let's put on a plus, y squared over y to the fourth power, let's just split the fraction, 
so we will have 1 over y squared and then we put this over that which is minus 3x squared over y to the fourth power and this is with dy and of course at the end this over that is just zero and now you can either trust me or just do this on your own this is definitely exact I will trust myself so I will just go ahead and solve this for you guys because I know this is exact that means I will have a function I will call that to be capital F so that this right here is partial of f with respect to x and this right here is partial of f with respect to y and let me just start with this right here so partial of f with respect to x I know this is 2x over y to the third power I want to figure out what's capital F right so now let's go ahead integrate both sides with respect to x so I put down dx on the side right here and we will see here we will have just capital F and remember capital F is a function of x and y and on the right hand side let's see what do we have when you integrate this 2 over y to the third power is just a constant instead so let me just write that down and we have to just integrate x and we'll get x squared over 2 so they cancel see that okay well when you integrate this remember we have to put a plus constant but in the x world y is considered a constant right so just like this y is considered a constant so I'm not just going to put on plus c I will have to put on plus a function of y so let me just put on plus g of y like this so this is how the form of capital F should look like so let me just put this down x squared over y to the third power and then we put down plus g of y and what do we do next well we have to make the connection this is capital F and we know this right here is the partial of F with respect to y so let's go ahead and differentiate both sides take the partial with respect to y on the left hand side we get partial of F with respect to y on the right hand side okay what's this x squared is just x squared so let's write that down and let's do this carefully this is technically y to the negative 3 power so bring the negative 3 to the front and then minus 1 right so we will have y to the negative 4 and this right here is plus g prime of y okay and now you see that this is how the partial of f with respect to y is this is what we have so of course we set them equal to each other so we set this to be that so we will have let me write it down in red 1 over y squared minus 3x squared over y to the fourth power and you see this and that in fact are the same isn't it bring this down below it's exactly the same as that that means g prime of y has to be the same as 1 over y squared so let me just write this down for you guys we must have g prime of y equals to 1 over y squared and if you would like you can write this down as y to the negative 2 power because I have to integrate now right integrate integrate with respect to y with respect to y here we'll end up with g of y only g is a function of y on the right hand side you add 1 which is going to give you negative 1 divided by negative 1 right which is the same as multiplied by negative 1 so all in all you will have negative y to the negative 1 and if you would like you can uh, stop right here and right here technically you put a plus constant it's just a constant because g is a function of y so just a number right? just a constant no x no x earlier um, the capital F we put down g of y because capital F is a function of both x and y so in this case it's different g is just a function of y so plus, plus c anyways this is how we are going to finally write down the answer I will write the answer down in this form f of x y is equal to the constant usually I have to label this as c1 doesn't really matter that much the function part on the left hand side the constant on the right hand side that's all so uh, my function is right here this is what we have first so we will have x squared over y to the third power right and g of y we know is this and let me write it down as minus this is the same as saying 1 over y so let's put on 1 over y as I said this constant I'm just going to bring to the right hand side so all in all we will have the constant here and this right here is the answer
x squared over y to the third power minus 1 over y is equal to the constant c, and we are done.